three branches of government. Mm -hmm. Where do the Congress, the presidency, and the Supreme Court derive their power? Uh, all three of them derive their power from the Constitution, which is our foundational document. It's the basis for how we govern. Right? Article one of the Constitution is dedicated to the Congress, which is our legislature, and they make the laws. Article two is dedicated to the executive branch, which is powers vested in the President of the United States. And he is responsible to execute and enforce the laws. And Article three is the judiciary branch of the government and powers vested in the Supreme Court. And it is their role to interpret the laws that are made by the Congress. So what we're talking about really is separation of powers, mm -hmm. right? And what the textbook right. refers to as checks and balances. Exactly. Do you foresee any problems with this separation in our political system? Uh, yeah, sure, uh, but it's, it was, it's inevitable. It was, it was set up to be that way. Right? The Founding Fathers created a system where we had to deliberate and work hard to compromise and reach conclusions together, and that doesn't always happen. Right? There are often disagreements between both parties uh, or between Congress and the presidency, and so a law won't get passed in those kind of cases, and you can have good luck. Has the separation of powers and checks and balances uh, worked well in the United States? Sure. I mean, our, our, our government, our country has existed for over 230 years using that system. Um, and for instance, to give you an example, think about Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act. Um, Republicans and Democrats disagreed um, over that on many issues. Um, but in the end, Congress did pass the bill. And it went to the president, who did not veto, but passed the bill as well. And again, it was challenged in the court systems by special interest groups and local governments, different aspects. But at the end of the day, it was upheld by the Supreme Court. How can our students learn more about checks and balances, separation of powers, and the powers of the three branches of government? Uh, the best way to um, understand the powers of government would be to read the Constitution. Our Constitution is the shortest in the world. It's only 10 pages. It's worth the read. It's an easy read. Thank you, Professor McBride. You're welcome. Thank you. Our students, if you want to learn more about this issue, refer to your textbook.